Hi guys, today we're going to be looking at inferential tests and this is really important for your exams and you'll probably be asked a few questions on this so I really advise you to take notes and remember the content that I'm about to show you. This is a really important table and make sure you do jot this table down and commit it to memory um, and this is the criteria for using a specific non-parametric test and non-parametric test is really important here because as you'll see in a minute um, we'll be looking at parametric tests in a sec. So um, for independent measures design in a test of difference and a nominal uh, data type a chi-squared test is used. Uh, for repeated and nominal it's binomial, for independent and ordinal it's Mann-Whitney and for repeated ordinal it's Wilcoxon and for a test of correlation it's always Spearman's row correlation coefficient. And please note that for this box here, which is test of correlation for nominal, you can't have a correlational test with nominal, nominal data. And to use um, a test for interval or ratio level data, you need to have a par you need to have parametric data um, that we'll look at in a sec. But here is a quick way of remembering that table that I just showed you, and I just came up with this. It's kind of rubbish, but it will help you remember. So call cool bears make weird sounds. Uh, chi-squared, binomial sign test, man whitney u test, and Will Cox and sign ranks test, and Spinman's row correlation coefficient, they all start with the letter of what I just said, call bears make weird sounds. So if I go back, I'll just show you what I mean. Um, so it goes, call bears make weird sounds from left to right. Call bears make weird sounds. So if you remember it like that, then you'll be fine, um, as long as you can remember the names of the tests as well as the letters. Um, so yeah, that is a quick way of remembering the whole table. Okay, so I'm going to look at significance quick and this is kind of confusing but I will show you an example after this slide so that you have a clearer idea on what I mean. Um, so in order for research to using the chi-squared test to be considered significant, the calculated value of x squared has to equal or exceed your critical value given in the exam. For a binomial sign test, the um, calculated value has to be equal to or less than the critical value and in order for the man whitney u test to be considered considered significant the calculated value of p um, has to be equal to or less than the critical value in order for research using the wilcox and signed rank test to be considered significant the calculated value of n needs to be equal to or less than the critical value in order for research using spinman's row correlation coefficient to be considered significant the, re the calculated value of n needs to be equal to or exceed the critical value and basically you just have to remember like this but I will show you a quick example and here we have one from this specimen paper um, so the, chi the chi-squared gave an observed calculated value of 3.80 um, and here we have a table with the critical values in and so because the chi-squared test um, because the calculated value of x squared has to equal or exceed your critical value in a chi-square test, we can see, sorry, we can see that it is significant at the 0.05 level, so p is less than or equal to 0.05, um, but it doesn't exceed this value, so it is not um, significant at this level, it's just significant at this level here. So it's pretty simple, and I hope this example made things a little bit clearer for you, but if not, then um, just refer to the textbook, I'm sure it has it a bit simpler in there. But um, now we're going to look at interval and ratio data and in order, con in order to conduct the appropriate parametric tests of difference uh, or correlation for interval or ratio level data, the data must meet the criteria use it for using a parametric test. And these criteria are that the data has to be interval or ratio, the data has to have a curve of normal distribution, and the variances should be similar. And what I mean by a curve of normal distribution is this curve right here, where the mean, the median and the mode are all at the top point. Um, and it has symmetry about the uh, middle. So that's all you need to know for this, but just make sure you commit this to memory because you're likely to get it on a multiple choice question perhaps. Uh, so yeah, you do need to know this. Thank you for watching that short presentation. I hope it helped um, and good luck in your exam tomorrow if you're doing that. Um, thank you for watching.